Welcome, welcome. Welcome back to the Hardcore Podcast. I'm your host, Robert Melton. And I'm your co-host, Christopher Norwood. And this is episode 73. And this will be uh, partly in memoriam of the late, great Akira Toriyama. Yes, indeed. The man was born April 5th, 1955, and passed uh, this month, March 1st. R. P. Twenty four. Yeah, just shy of sixty nine. Damn! Couldn't I even know. hit that mark. Almost. Um, Sheesh. But yeah, super sad stuff. Uh, so anyway, enough about <laughs> him. <laughs> no, we couldn't do the man like that. Um, gosh, it sucks because again, you clipped it the other week, but man, we were just talking about that shit. Yeah. Like how sad of a day that'll be when he passes. I know, dude. I feel like we spoke it into existence on this. Oh my gosh, you're gonna make us <laughs> the most hated <laughs> men <laughs> in the world right now. Yeah, seriously. Um But um to honor him, I did start and I've wanted to start this. Um I don't know why I haven't finished it. It's literally only one volume, but I did start Sandland with the uh release of that game coming out. And I gotta say, I'm really enjoying it. Like, it's everything that I loved about, like, Dragon Ball. Hmm. Like, it's not, like, action-packed, but it's just, like, fun, charming, innocent adventure. Why don't you just watch the movie? The Sandland movie? Is there a movie? Yep. Like, an anime movie? Came out, like, last year, I think. Oh, did it? I know they're, um, <coughs> I know they're making an anime. I didn't know there was a movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll definitely have to check that out then. Yeah. I wasn't aware. Unless it's just a series, but... Maybe could have swore something <coughs> like a movie or something came out. Already came out. Because uh, again, check. I know there's um, an anime in the works, which I imagine will be like a season or two seasons at best. Because again, it's just one volume complete. Yeah. Looks like a movie. No, I mean it's definitely, you know little enough there to just like make a movie out of it yeah world premiere san diego comic-con 2023 or was it a world premiere premiering that they were making an anime uh it's hour 46 minutes oh wow okay yeah. no i'll definitely have to uh got an eight out of ten. Oh, nice i'll definitely have to check that out because i thought about um you can't see it but i have all of dragon ball on the shelf behind the cameras um, I thought about cracking into that, but I was like, you know what? Let me try Sandland. And I have the the Shonen Jump membership, the app. It's like two dollars a month, and you can just read pretty much all of Shonen. And it was on there, so I was like, oh, let me let me go ahead and pull the trigger there. Oh. Yeah, <coughs> so that's been pretty fun. Hell yeah! It's kind of like <clears throat> again, I could have just like read through all of it. But I think it's like subconsciously me taking my time because I like don't want it to end. Mm-hmm. One of those kind of things. Like uh, I'm a big Uncharted guy, and uh, no surprise here, I never finished Uncharted Four, oh, really? but I got like right there. Like I could probably beat it in like 30 minutes. No but way. I think it was subconscious, just like oh man, I love this shit, and this is like the end of uh, Nathan Drake's adventure. So I just never, never beat it. Got to start it all over. <laughs> <laughs> no, that one was really fun to go through, so that I definitely will start all over. Is that well, like a 20-hour game, maybe? Yeah, somewhere between like 15, 20. There's, it's kind of like um, The Last of Us. There's a few little things to collect, so you could probably push it to 20, 25 Damn. hours. But um, solid stuff. I would highly encourage, but again, I know that's not your uh, type of game. But um, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it depends, I guess. I feel like a game like that would have some pretty cool stuff in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think The Last of Us has pretty good pacing. But I would say it's on par, maybe even a little bit better, that there's just always something exciting going on. The Last of Us is like a visual novel with some uh, some trigger action. Where <laughs> Uncharted is like a Indiana Jones movie. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Oh man. How would you um sorry to get off on this tangent. Um what's the gameplay style of like Days Gone compared to like The Last of Us? 
There's a lot more. Is that more open world since you're like the motorcycle aspect? And oh, all it's that? very, it's very open world. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's actually a pretty big open world. Um, I don't know if I would say there's like exciting things around every corner. Um, there's definitely a lot more zombies because mm-hmm. you have like hordes of zombies. Um, but that game's awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I would say, uh, again, you can kind of approach it the same way. Like, you can take a stealthy approach or just go guns mm-hmm. blazing. Okay. Um, all right, back to Akira Toriyama. I don't know if I've ever asked you this. So I know, like, your favorite Super Saiyan is obviously, like, Super Saiyan 3, Goku. Yep. Would you say, like, that's your favorite character? Goku? Like, Super Saiyan 3, Goku character oh well i guess kind of because i don't like i mean not that i don't like but i love um just like the angry side of goku oh just yeah. how powerful he yeah. gets you know, like he takes no shit once he gets to that level mm-hmm. um but like when he's happy go lucky you know sparring or just fighting for fun until like something like krillin dying happens mm-hmm. um it's still a fun watch, but yeah, I definitely like the. Yeah, no, I think those are um, definitely just my favorite moments within anime. Mm-hmm. And those like passionate moments where it's exactly. just like, I'm not fucking around now. Yeah. You brought me to this level. Now I'm gonna beat your ass. I want to destroy my world. <laughs> <laughs> um, shoot. Yeah, I'd probably have to say again. I'm a big just OG Dragon Ball fan, so I'd probably say Goku as well, if it'd be Kid Goku. Krillin. I love, oh man, <laughs> Kid Krillin, gosh, it just hits different. And a lot of it's just uh, their design, especially like the OG design. I hate seeing Kid Goku and Kid Krillin, but they're like skinny. Oh yeah. You know, I like where they got a little bit of a plump. fat on them. Yeah, a little mm-hmm. bit of plump, a little, little chubby. I know, I've seen a, it's an old meme, but I've seen it again the other day, because uh, they're viral right now, ever since Akira's passing, but it was like, uh, Vegeta's neck had the best character development of all time, because like that. OG, I seen that too. Dragon yeah, Ball yeah. Z, <laughs> it's like so skinny, mm-hmm, and he kind of had like the red tint in his hair. Oh, that was super OG, yeah. And uh, so that was like him in uh, Nappa, Yep. and they always, he's just had his arms permanently crossed with his original voice actor wasn't yeah. even chris sabbath at the time yeah that is true that's crazy yeah and even sean shemo i believe uh wasn't the original goku not kid goku but no, at, no, no. i think at the i could have swore at the end of dragon ball is when he started um voicing him oh really or at least for one of the dubs i don't know if like they had sean like then kind of dub over yeah, because I know there's like at least one other guy that at least did some maybe filler parts. Maybe, maybe because I had recently seen a clip, and it was the end of Dragon Ball where he like marries Chi Chi, and it was definitely Sean Shemmel. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Maybe could have been a Kai thing. Well, no, because Dragon Ball is the Kai. Yeah, Kai's definitely all Sean Shemmel. Yeah. Um, but huge uh, Kid Goku fan. I've always, like, everyone loves Vegeta, you know? Yeah. But Maj and Vegeta? It's like that same thing <laughs> exactly. with, like, it's Super Saiyan 3 uh, Goku. Um, but especially with Maj and Vegeta, where he still had, like, a bit of himself there, mm-hmm. where he wasn't, like, fully letting this, like, take over him. Oh, yeah. He had, like, his, uh, he had, like, I can't even say equal parts. I'd have to say it's, like, 60% of, like, OG Vegeta and maybe, mm-hmm. like, 40% of, like, his current self. Yeah. But, like, just enough to where he'd punch the fuck out of Trunks, his child. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wasn't even grown-up Trunks. He was just like, Eesh! get out of here. But I've always loved uh, Majin Vegeta. And then, you know, same with, like, uh, Super Saiyan 2, Teen Gohan. Everyone loves Super Saiyan 2, Teen Gohan, Cell Games. Yeah, it's just so iconic. Um, But reading through Sandland really made me, um, I guess it, made me remember just how good his, uh, like when it comes to like creating a character, how good his character development is. 
Like, dude, he doesn't miss with making a character. I know. Like, let's just kind of go through it real quick. Just villains. Um, <laughs> like Raditz, awesome. The Ginyu s- squad, mm-hmm. awesome. Frieza, so iconic. Cell, doesn't miss. Boo, Janemba. Yeah. Like, dude, he just, he seriously doesn't miss. Piccolo. Piccolo. I mean, you can seriously go on and on. Tien, I mean, I loved... That was another reason why I love Dragon Ball, just because everyone was kind of like here power wise. Mm-hmm. You know, Goku wasn't just like a god at the time. Yeah. So like Teen was badass. Even Yamcha was pretty badass. Um, but I mean, Sandland so far has some really good characters. I already really like uh, Beelzebub, uh, Sheriff Rao, and then some new characters were just introduced. But just like the uh, the design of them, I'm like, damn, dude. I wonder why. Like, it's why. so him. It's just, it's so good. Oh, I mean, even going back to Dragon Ball, like, Aider, Android Aid. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just so cool. And he was just like, you know what? I'm going to introduce the Red Ribbon, and one of the androids is going to be Frankenstein. Frankenstein. <laughs> 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 like, that's so, like, off the wall, but yeah. like, it works so well. Yeah, especially the way he uh, animates him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely very cool. Yeah, and just the dynamic there where he's like, he's going to be just a really nice world loving guy because mm-hmm. you, know? you can look at that character and be like okay that's frankenstein but you can also look at that character and be like akira toriyama drew that yeah oh <laughs> exactly i mean yeah you can really say that with uh just all of his art over the years um one thing i thought was funny because um in the manga the sandland manga it shows because this takes place in like post-apocalypse mm-hmm. like a post-apocalyptic world where like um pretty much the aftermath of, like, a nuclear war. So it's just in this, like, desert. And all they're really after is just, like, water. Like, that's what really holds value. Um, But it showed him, like, playing a console. And that was one of the things that he had persuaded uh, Beelzebub to help him with. Uh, Sheriff Rao was like, hey, I'll give you this console. And, again, this was made in, like, 1999, 2000. Like, it's old. Mm -hmm. And... I don't know if it was altered, if this is, or if this is like the original, um, like originally how it was written. But what he had given him was like um, a PlayStation Six. Oh, really? And he said, "Whoa, the PlayStation Six, and it comes with uh, Dragon Quest Thirteen. No way! And I was like, "Whoa, that's so interesting because we're at Dragon Quest Twelve, so like Dragon oh. Quest Thirteen could potentially come out on the PS Six. Wow." That's nuts. Super interesting. So again, like I don't know if that's how it originally was, or if someone like kind of changed it. I don't think they would change it though, because again, that's on the Shonen Jump app. Yeah. But I was just like, whoa, fucking the Simpsons shit going on here. Yeah, just seriously. Calling call, calling the stuff out like that. Damn. I wonder if we did some math to like conjure up that number. Yeah. <laughs> but also, I love that he used Dragon Quest because he's like, eh, I can, I can do this. Yeah, th- that is true. <laughs> but I mean, even with um, I haven't played through Chrono Trigger, but even like those characters designs, mm-hmm. you know, they're just so iconic. Which I mean, that game is just super iconic. Uh, to many, that's like one of the best JRPGs of all time. Yeah. But um, I mean, you have, I don't know if his name is Chrono, but like the red-haired guy, and then you have like the frog, and then a robot, and I'm like. Oh, this is just <laughs> so random, but again, this is just so like Akira. Like this just works. Yeah, I, I guess his guy. world building and just character design is just top notch. The man's a legend. Makes Art me, speaks for itself. Seriously, makes me want to go through um, Doctor Slump mm. as well. That's another one of his like old ones. That's yeah, that kind of um, got his career off the ground. Yeah, that was the big one. But I think it's going to be like the same just type of adventure. Uh, I imagine that Z was the first like kind of like more action oriented. I believe so. Uh, yeah. Manga he wrote. Apparently, I didn't. I was reading about him a little earlier, and I didn't know he had like an obsession with like cars. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no, and he's that's why just there's like vehicles and all of his shit. Mm-hmm. Like whenever you see a lot of the pictures of mm-hmm. him. Um, he's always, it's like, like a model car or like, he's just like drawing a bunch of just different like vehicle and tank designs and robot designs and stuff. Yeah. 
um, which is cool with uh, Sandland, again, coming out April 25th. But, you know, with this game being based on a manga that's just one volume, I think they are really pushing on, like, the uh, vehicular combat, yeah. which is cool. Yeah, everything I've seen of that game just looks super dope. And it just looks like a really pretty game. I'm sure he would have loved to play it. Ah, <sighs> I know. Damn. Um. Well, before we get too far into the episode, I say we run the intro. Okay, yeah. So, um, a little bit more about Sandland. Um, I did have a little thing here. Um, he has not been drawing the franchise's latest manga series, Akira. Like, towards, um, I guess, his last working days. For Sandland, or? It was for Sandland. Yeah, so, uh, he actually didn't draw a lot of Dragon Ball Super. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he passed that role down to a dude named Toyotaro. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's worked on, like, several Dragon Ball. I mean, you got to have somebody help draw it, right? Yeah, yeah. this guy was, like, his uh, protege, Mm -hmm. I suppose. Like, he was in a... um, Because I did read up a little bit on it, but, yeah, like, an apprentice protege. And I think it was, like, you know, obviously he's working with them during, like, Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. And, you know, he was able to somewhat kind of, like, mimic his style. So when it came to Super, I think he was very confident with being able to kind of, like, all right, this is, like, your baby. Yeah, and I think if you grew up watching, like, Dragon Ball and you had, like, an inkling for drawing at any point in your life during, Mm -hmm. you know, growing up, you probably drew some Dragon Ball characters. And I, for one, have drawn Dragon Ball characters probably thousands of times. Yeah. <laughs> no, same. Up. Uh definitely not well. Not bad either. But right. I mean one of our good friends, Antonio, that's what he yeah. is all about. He still does it. Yeah, he oh, makes man. comics and shit all the time. I can remember when I first met Antonio, uh, it was when I moved to Dimwitty and we rode the bus together. And I mean, from the very start, he was just a total nerd. Uh, <laughs> I remember him and some guys would uh have there's three of them. I don't know if they each had, dif- you know, ruby, sapphire, emerald, but they would always have their SBs playing. And I remember one of uh, one of the guys, AG, AJ, uh, he had showed me at the time, and he was he had like 600 hours in emerald. Jesus. Yeah, dude, it was crazy. But uh, they would always battle each other and like link up. And um, another thing is, he would always write his own Dragon Ball Z comics. Mm-hmm. And he would incorporate his friends, and his friends would have just different designs and stuff, and it was just always so cool. And even to this day, he doesn't. And yeah. again, that was back in 07. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, but in, an, in a recent interview, you know, whenever this article was done, I didn't even check the date, but um, for the upcoming film, oh, it actually says it here, Sandland, which has been translated and shared by uh, Toriyama, gave the reason he stopped drawing manga. And it said uh, that he always worked with a particular pen holder, which I'm assuming is like a, the grip on the pen. Mm-hmm. It's a pen holder is, you know, you just got to put your pen in. It doesn't make sense. Um, but it said that he always used a particular pen holder, which he, is, uh, he had a tendency to misplace it. And he said it just didn't feel right after he lost it. And he had it since he was like 14. Oh, wow. Yeah. So ever yeah. since he, like, started working on stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Hmm. Well, that's definitely interesting. Yeah. So you, so after he, he had lost that, he just kind of just wasn't drawing as much? Yeah, from my understanding. Hmm. What's cool is you know there's going to be, like, some really in-depth, like, documentary that comes out Dude. soon. Yeah, so I can't wait. That's going to be really cool just to, because um, obviously we know he has a hand in many things, uh, which is a bunch of different video games, but it'll be cool to see the extent 
of like what all he did, mm-hmm. um, which I'm I'm hoping the documentary would cover. Um, yeah, I gosh, mean, I mean, one documentary is not enough, right? Yeah, I mean, just the last week on social media, like my shit was blown up with just a Kira Toriyama Dragon Ball and whatever else he's worked on shit, and even other animes. Like I know of the amount of people that were honoring him, mm-hmm. like throughout the manga and anime universe and even beyond that but yeah i just uh especially with what we had said about like you know the animes you love probably wouldn't be a thing without this man yeah. and right. just how they were just all confirming it i know like yeah. referencing him as like sensei and like this is the whole reason why i started to draw just like the void that they feel now it was really heartfelt yeah um and it was n- really nice to see just you know, everyone just kind of honoring him and putting some respect on that name, Facts. you know. Um, but, yeah, no, same. I've just been seeing so much stuff. And I've just been trying to, like, post a bunch of stuff and repost. And um, just because there's a lot of, uh, again, just, like, heartfelt stuff out there with memorials and whatnot. Damn, I wonder if he would have expected, uh, like, something like this. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, um, I've been seeing a lot of videos. I haven't like watched them, but you know the uh, the caption for it will be like, um, "Like this man changed my life." Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I can say the same, but like, I also don't know what my life would look like without it. You know, true. Because that was a big part of it growing up. Obviously, we had things like uh, Pokemon and Digimon, but again, would we have those things without him? You know, <laughs> right? But you know, we grew up. Uh, like watching Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z and who knew what subconsciously we were like, what messages from that we were taking and just how that uh, like kind of molded us growing up. Mm-hmm. So it's crazy to think that this guy across the world that we don't know played some type of part in all of our lives and just growing up to the, the men and women that we've all become. It's just nuts. I know. Yeah. Like I mean. there's no way he he would be able to like, just like fathom just how many like lives he's touched yeah no that's gotta feel feel like a lot of pressure some type of indication you know yeah but uh i'm sure i'm sure it did but i I know he did not like being famous yeah he was very very humble yeah actually i seen something recently i don't even think he was the biggest animation fan really yeah i think he was just um, a manga yeah, just I think mainly just like manga, but I think he was also pretty close to the uh, Japanese voice actor actress for uh, for Goku. Mm. I think he really um, yeah, because she's an older woman. Yeah, I, r- I think he really enjoyed her playing that role. Yeah, but I, I guess it makes sense. I mean, the dude was born in fifty five. You don't necessarily grow up on TV at that age. Yeah, yeah. And when you do, it's all black and white, really shitty, and yeah, I imagine she was probably um and really not s- similarly much aged, probably as well. I think yeah. she, she's definitely up there. She's got to be at least in her sixties, yeah, I would say. But um, I seen like videos from uh, Sonny Strait, the voice of Krillin. Mm-hmm. Um, I seen Chris Sabat. Um, he had some things to say. I, I haven't seen anything from Sean Schemmel yet, but I wonder if he like met them. Met. Yeah. Oh, like I feel met like like uh, Akira Toriyama. Well, maybe or not. If he met them. Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like after you've worked on the series for thirty years, then probably. <laughs> yeah. Especially with just how big it is, like yeah. just how big the uh, the English dub is. I'll say that because mm-hmm. obviously you can't meet the voice actors for every single dub. Yeah. You know. I like feel like they've had to have crossed paths at least once. Right. It's interesting to think. I wonder if, like, what we hold um, people like uh, Chris Sabat and Sean Shamwell to, do they do the same in, like, their native-speaking countries? Like the, I don't know, like uh, the French voice actor. Oh. Like, are they like, oh, man, <coughs> that yeah. dude's a legend. I think so, um, at least for the countries that have that translation, which mm-hmm. most probably do for something as big as Dragon Ball. Right. Um, I know for sure, like um, Mexico, 
that's a huge country for Dragon Ball. Maybe the bigger than the U.S. Really? It's fucking massive. Yeah, down there. Damn. That's awesome, though. Yeah, I think <laughs> I've seen IGN post something about, like, uh, the cartel called for a ceasefire after Akira died. What? Yeah. Really? So it's, like, even affecting the cartel. <laughs> Damn, dude. That's crazy. Yeah. But if you look at, like, um soccer games and stuff, yeah. um, usually in, like, Mexico or, like, the... um latin american areas um you'll see like fucking huge posters and shit with like dragon ball characters on them yeah and uh hell there was even um two wrestlers after he died um naomi and uh zelina vega they did the fusion dance in the ring Mm -hmm. to honor him that's awesome yeah and a lot of people have done like entrances Mm-hmm. Like Dragon Ball Z entrances. Yeah. Um, like Ronda Rousey. She did one with like the Majin M on her forehead. I think she came out in like a Vegeta t-shirt once. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. No, that's really cool. But I mean, the, yeah, fucking, the influence that Dragon Ball has yeah, is insane. It's deserved just how like mainstream it's got. Oh, yeah. It's almost it's hard to think about it as an anime. You know, it's just oh. it's, it's just so deeply like just woven <laughs> into uh, our culture. I know. Yeah, everybody's heard of fucking Dragon Ball Z. Hmm. Probably, hmm. it's got to be up there with Pokemon. I mean, yeah. Think about the um, what is that parade? The Macy's Day Parade? Yeah, or Macy's. There's yeah, fucking. Like, Goku has his own float. Yeah, like, like that all just the time. Lets you know, and that's like him with Pikachu and a bunch of like Disney character mm-hmm. floats. Like that just lets you know how big it is. Just again, just a part of our culture. It's just woven in there. <laughs> that is true. Nuts. I love seeing shit like that. Yeah, I wonder if he, because I think he does have his hand in the. Uh, the newest Dragon Ball series we're getting, Daima. Yeah, that's probably b- probably the last thing he worked on. Yeah, Aside like I wonder if he like just kind of has it all. You know, obviously, I just imagine like a room, a bunch of writers. If he just kind of has it all laid out. Yeah. So like, if they still know, like, hey, this is what he wanted. This is what he wanted to do with this. Yeah, I feel like the type of person he is, and we all know he's like notorious for being like forgetful. Like, of characters and shit, like, even in Dragon Ball. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of plot holes in Dragon Ball, as we know. Yeah, um, just characters that just didn't show up. But it's been going on for fucking 40 years or so. Mm-hmm. Um, nearly. I don't remember where I was going with that, but... uh, Daima, we were talking about Daima. Oh, yeah, just I assume the type of person out. he is, is he's just gonna, you know, put the plot out there and, like, write the story, give it to the whoever's going to do it. And I assume most people that he is working with have previous background and whatever else he's worked on. Right. So right. they kind of know the flow of things. Well, I just imagine, uh, like, I wonder how much of, like, the the writer, the main writer for, like, Super. Like, is he mainly doing this? Yeah. Because these characters obviously just have such long histories. So, like... We already know about these characters, yeah. You know, so I feel like it is kind of even with this passing, maybe it is easier to kind of like write for if things weren't finished. That's true. I assume it could be similar to like uh, George R. R. Martin, where he's like, um, "Here's how it ends. Um, I haven't written season seven or eight, but here's some plot points I want you to hit, Mm -hmm. and then in between the lines." You know what I mean? Right. I wonder if this is, like, do you, because I see the respect uh, it, with both options. Like, do you, is this something, like, almost like Pokemon, where it's like, I really don't see this ever ending? Um, like, is Dragon know? Ball ever going to end? Or it, is it kind of like, hey, out of respect, we're going to end it here? Or it, out of respect, do we keep it going? That's a good question. I mean, I, I guess it ultimately depended on what he wanted. Yeah. Um, Which I don't know if he put it out there. I I don't know if he did or not because he didn't die from an illness. He died from a head injury, of all things. Yeah. Um, 
It was very sudden. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, because obviously we have Daima. Um, we have an unreleased Dragon Ball Tenkaichi game, pretty much. Well, you know what? Um, so um, we still have stuff that's coming out. From Dragon Ball Z, after that we got GT, which was still in the 90s, by the way. Yeah. Maybe um, early 2000s by the time we got it. I can't remember. Yeah, I think it kind of bled into the 2000s. Yeah. For us, anyways. Um, But after that, we didn't get Super until... Like 2015? Yeah. Not like eight years ago. Yeah. That, that was a long time, like a long hiatus that we got any content for Dragon Ball. That is true. Aside from like video games, games and shit. Yeah, that was always kind of sprinkled in there. Um, I believe there was still... Well, actually, no, the manga probably came out pretty close to like the movies and shit, I believe. Maybe a year or two before the movies. I just, movie and the show. Obviously, I, you know, there's still a lot to be told with Super. Some things that aren't finished. And I'm not yeah. super caught up. Mm, super caught up. <laughs> but like, obviously, this guy kind of has taken the reins of Super. But Super is now dealing with a lot of just like multi-universe stuff. So mm-hmm. I feel like when you kind of beat all those bad guys and um, what's that one character that Zen was... Osama. Yeah, it's like this is like the strongest guy, you know? Like where do you go from there after you've kind of beat all the baddies in the universes? I feel like at that point it's like, all right, we can put this to rest. We can end this. Because you yeah. can really just have games just continuously coming out. Yeah, I don't know where you really go from there. Yeah. Because you can't just kill the being that created the fucking universes, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I'm not saying that, but, like, we've seen the strongest. Exactly. Um, but, again, if you have, other than him, the strongest of all the universes who are posing the problem, once we do get to those points in Super, if we're not already there, and, like, it's animated, it's finished, like, what then, yeah. you know? That's probably why they went to, like, Daima, just for some content of yeah. some sort. And even that's supposed to be canon, and kind of, you know, be in the middle between Z and Super. Mm-hmm. Um, but at that point, like, maybe they then uh, remake Dragon Ball. You know, I wouldn't be mad at that. I, <laughs> you know me, I wouldn't either. <laughs> um, so I'd, that could easily be done. Yeah. I just think it's, you know, I, m- my personal opinion. Um I just think it's a story that should have some type of ending. Mm-hmm. No, you know, I agree. I don't want it to be one of those things where we're just like, all right, we're just going to milk it out just to milk it out and make some money, you know? Yeah. Kind of sad thinking about like um, him dying and then them, you know, whoever it may be, just going through like all of his work, like all of his papers at his home to see if there is like any information that they can just pull. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, like some, um, like, dang, I meant to, I was working on this character, Mm -hmm. or I was working on this, uh, maybe Goku could then power up to this. You know, maybe he was working on another level or something. What if he was the one who released fucking (laughs) Super Saiyan 7 Goku on Google Images? Uh, (laughs) People are going to have a field day with this. (laughs) Um, Yeah, no. So, again, that's why I, I come back to, like, out of respect and honor, do we end it? Or out of respect and honor, do we keep it going? I don't know. I mean, I say we keep it going. Continue that legacy. But not forever, right? Absolutely not. Oh, okay. There's got to come a stopping point at some point. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think... I mean, maybe. What I mean, look at fucking like Marvel and DC. That shit just goes on forever and ever and ever. Yeah. But we have hit a point where we're just like, all right, the superhero babies... Come on. Well, I think there's, um, I mean, just that Marvel and DC, the universe is just so vast, you know? Yeah. And in the movies, we're now starting to, like, get to those, like, Thanos-level villains, you know? Mm-hmm. But that's what I'm saying with Dragon Ball Super. Like, we're there. We're now, like, fighting those guys from the different universe. Yeah. You know? But, I mean, you know how it is. Something happens. Yeah. Fucking... Zenosama 
does something on accident and spawns this fucking unholy being. <laughs> or what they do is, and I can see this. Um, I didn't even think about it till now. Um, maybe uh, they take the focus away from Goku at some point. I was just thinking you that because, like, you know, how Marvel is like fucking Hawkeye has his own like TV show or whatever or movie, whatever. Right. Nobody gives a fuck about Hawkeye. But they still made it. Yeah. Some people do, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sure it's like some diehard fans. Give us like a a Yamcha volume or something, you know? There actually is a uh, a Yamcha manga. Yeah, so. I they think could, they could do that I, for any character. I think it was actually written by Akira. It was uh, called That Time I Got Reincarnated as Yamcha. <laughs> dude, no. I'm, I'm not even kidding. Are you serious? I'm not. Dude, look it up. That Time I Got Reincarnated up, as dude. Yamcha? Yeah, yeah. Let me fact check. What the fuck? Who got reincarnated as Yamcha? I, I mean, I may have the word, I may have the wording wrong, but that time I got reincarnated. What the fuck? As Yamcha. Who who was it that got reincarnated? Yamcha. He's like li- hates his life so much. He was like, why the fuck was I? All right, born Dragon this Ball. Guy? That time I got reincarnated as Yamcha. Uh, is a spin-off manga written and drawn by uh, maybe it wasn't Akira Toriyama. Hmm. It says a Dragon Ball fan's greatest dream is to getting to live in the Dragon Ball universe and fight alongside Goku and his friends, but one particular fan is in for a rude awakening when he suddenly dies and gets reincarnated as everyone's favorite punching bag. <laughs> I don't know what I was seeing that I had I had thought that was Akira, so my bad on that. Well, it says that's still oh, funny oh, though. It says that's probably what I seen based on Dragon Ball by Akira Toriyama. Oh, uh, okay. But I mean, I think it is like that's so a fan fiction. An official, um, I think there is like a a manga for it. That's like hilarious. A tangible, uh, like manga volumes for it. Hmm. Um, yeah. Well, it's probably one if anything, because it is. I think I'm only seeing like four to five chapters here. But either way, yeah, that is that is pretty funny. Um, Fan fiction's gone too far. <laughs> but like even something like Yamcha, who is a meme at that point, at this point, but in Dragon Ball, I kind of enjoyed him. And just like Wolf Fang Fist is still pretty badass. Yeah. But like even if you went back to the beginning, like before Yamcha met Goku, like and you kind of filled in that, like what was he doing? What did him and Poir do? Yeah. You know, like I feel like that I would read that. I would watch that. It's not going to be like badass, but it could yeah. just be something kind of charming, silly, fun. I mean, I think that would be cool, or you know, it'd be even cooler. Oh, I mean, there's definitely a lot cooler. Let me say that. That's just one example, you know. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, even just get away from the heroes. Let's go to the villains. Oh, dude, double. That's always cool. Yeah. Let's uh, the birth of Boo. Let's get the whole Boo timeline. That'd be sick. Oh, dude. You know, me and a buddy at work were talking about this. Like, we know Cell. He was just grown in a lab. Oh, yeah. Cell is. Oh, yeah. So we pretty is, much have right. this whole story. There is a lot that we don't know about Boo. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was like. Hundreds of years ago. Exactly. Yeah, dude. Like, that even, would be even cool. Even Frieza has to have some really cool background. Because he was like a, you know, this king pretty much. Yeah. Cooler. Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of cool stuff there. Um. But I was going to say, me and a buddy at work were talking about this, because I think we were talking about pretty much what we're talking about now, just kind of like the future of, and what I would have liked to have seen. I don't know how you would do it, and I guess they've kind of done it over the years with like Majin Vegeta, or like Baby Vegeta. But like, I don't know. Um, Goku and Vegeta finally have their showdown. <sighs> you know? Like, finally have Dude. their showdown. And I don't know what triggers this. I would hate to see it, but what if Trunks dies? What if Bulma dies and he just he just loses it? Yeah. And again, this, like, he has this, like, alter ego state. And he just goes mad and, like, Goku's trying to stop him. And some things happen, but it leads to this final showdown. Yeah. Like so, I, like, I, pretty much where, like, Dragon Ball Z started and it's ending, we're finally seeing it. Yeah, that is one thing about Dragon Ball. Is uh, there's always the Dragon Balls, you know. You can always reverse something that happens. Yeah. There's not that gut. It's, it's like a plot punch armor. when somebody dies. Yeah, yeah. 
which sucks in a way. But, but there's got to be a smart way to write that, to where like Trunks dies, not coming back. I don't know. Yeah. Bulma dies, not not coming back. The I Dragon mean, Balls were used too many times for Bulma. She made so many wishes. You'd have to tie it into beauty. fucking Shenron or something. Yeah, I mean, and maybe there's already some lore there. Um, maybe something I'm forgetting. Or again, just find some smart way to write it in. But they've already beat the strongest people throughout the universes. Who are the two strongest that are pretty much equals? Goku and Vegeta. Equals. Dude, that's the way equals to do it. Is, uh, pushing it by a mile. Well, I mean, I'm <laughs> saying like more so now. I think this alter ego definitely kind of puts them a, a lot yeah. closer together. Um, but, dude, that would be so badass. Like, no, I when, agree. when did we like Vegeta the most? When he was kind of an ass. Well, he's always an asshole. <laughs> yeah. But when he was like kind of a bad dude. Yeah. You know? I mean, he's the greatest villain in Dragon Ball history. You know? Yeah, he's so iconic. But I would—I don't know how. Again, they would do that. Something along the lines of what I just said. But that would—that would be sick. That'd be so sick. I don't think we'll get that. But that'd be sick. Yeah, unfortunately. But Who that knows? would be dope. Who knows? Um, I do have a little thing here, though. Okay. Um, Justin Chatwin. Who played Goku in the 2009 live action Dragon Ball Z Evolution? Oh, I I did see his. He uh, apologized he for the movie being so horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Recently, because of Kira died, which yeah. is, you know, good on him. I mean, that's very fair. He's aware of just. I mean, how he was just an actor. He I can't mean, help yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he could have helped it. That comment on me, I was awful. It was. It was so bad. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what was worse, the Kamehameha or just Piccolo. Yeah, that whole fucking It was all movie. terrible. It was it was I remember watching that shit and I think I was like a freshman and I was just like, "Fuck yeah, dude, finally a live action Dragon Ball film." I think we were all pretty excited, yeah, for whatever reason. And how god awful that was. I think that was our like first real live action adaptation like, yeah. of the anime. So we didn't know the stigma of just like how bad they all majority ninety nine percent of them end up being. Yeah, and that one definitely the worst by far. Yeah, that was so bad. Um, oh, and also Toonami is. I think it'll be done by the time this comes out, but I think this Saturday they're running a full Dragon Ball Z marathon. Mm, which, which is, is really cool. Definitely yeah. cool. I believe it's Kai though. Yeah, no, I I still really enjoy Kai. Yeah. Um but I mean that's where a lot of us, most of us fell in love. Oh, 100%. With, uh, that's Dragon exactly Ball where Z. I watched it. It was Toonami. Cartoon Network, baby. Every time I got home. Toonami. You're watching Toonami. I can't remember maybe it was just some random video I came across, but it, this guy was talking about how he remembered that moment when the uh, or the day where the um the fight between Goku and Frieza was airing and like no he was way. gonna go Super Saiyan and he was saying like everyone was outside just you know playing basketball at the park I imagine and he said once five thirty was coming every every kid cleared out no everybody way. was going back home to watch it and I was just like you know that almost makes you teary eyed thinking about it. Takes Dude. you back to a much simpler time, but you're like, yeah. That's fucking sick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I'm getting goosebumps. Once in a lifetime moments. I know, dude. Dragon, dragon, fuck. <laughs> dragon balls. <laughs> fuck, dude. Yeah, but moments like that, obviously. <laughs> Again, the Cell games. Going Super Saiyan 3, Kid Boo. There's so Dragon Ball iconic. Z arcs are so fucking good. Yeah. I wonder what it was. Um, again, this coming from the guy who wrote Dr. Slump. There's a lot of stuff that he wrote, but the big ones, Dr. Slump, Sandland, Dragon Ball. I wonder what had happened where he was like, I'm going to make this more action-packed. I know, yeah. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really... Uh, this is, this is going to be brutal. Yeah, I did read something where he wasn't like... He had never taken martial arts, but he was like a huge fan of like kung fu movies. Mm. So maybe he was just like, I wonder if I could like 
let's play around with this. And it turned out successful. Mm. Damn, yeah, that's crazy to think about. Like the people that inspired him. I know, So right? without them, we wouldn't have Akira, Akira Toriyama. And then without Akira Toriyama, we wouldn't have these other good animes. It's crazy, man. Domino effect. Yeah, for real. Maybe butterfly effect a little bit. It's a pretty much around the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but dude, absolute legend. Can't say enough. And it's really cool to think that I think we can both, uh, without a doubt, say like our whole lives we we will be honoring this man. Just like going I mean, back to the shows. We have fucking movies. Dragon Ball tattoos. I mean, yeah, <laughs> seriously. That was my first tattoo. Same. Uh, yeah, you got the, uh, wasn't the Majin yep. symbol? And I've got Kid Goku, Kid Krillin, pretty much that exact illustration. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, that exact illustration. Yeah. And then some uh, lyrics to uh, that really went with it. Uh, because growing up is giving up. 100%. Don't fully grow up. But still mature and get a job. And be an adult when you get to that age. Yeah, don't just fucking... But be a child at heart. There don't you go. sit around and watch anime all day. Not all day. Just 75% of your day. Yeah, just, you know, when, when all your shit's done, you get off work, and if you have kids, the kids are put to bed, and you got maybe an hour or two left with your day, then watch some anime. Yeah, but you gotta do be something. Be a real man. Be a real woman. Watch some anime. You gotta do something to reverse that catastrophic fucking failure. <laughs> of a life? No, f- kids. Oh. Having oh, kids. Damn. Oh, okay. I didn't know you were going <laughs> there with it. Yeah, but that's got to be so cool, Um, just going through all the shit. Dude, that Dude, would be like... the. W- if I had a kid, yeah. Yeah, one of the bonuses for having a kid would be just like teaching them video games, showing them like your favorite video games. Yeah. And then, yeah, definitely fucking crazy shit that you've seen on TV. I mean, their childhood would be my childhood. You know, I'd just be reliving it with them. For sure. I don't want to do it, Dad. Well, that's too damn bad. We're watching it. <laughs> um, But again, yeah, I can't say enough. The man's a legend. That's like if my Rest dad tried brother. to get me to fucking play Pong. Be like, dude, this shit is so whack. Oh, yeah. By the shit that comes out in the next 20 years. But I guess if maybe, I mean, Pong will always be pretty whack. But if like that's like the first thing you're introduced to, you know, yeah. maybe you don't know f- somehow. Maybe you don't know about everything else, and that's the first game. You may be like, "Oh wow, this is fun." Yeah, but it's like um, growing up, we played like usually like the latest shit at the time, like Final Fantasy VII or I don't know, whatever Oblivion when it came out. Mm-hmm. So to show that to a kid that's seen what's out there now. Oh, definitely. Like, say you were playing Ragnarok, like, oh, that looks really cool, Dad. And then you go to fucking... <laughs> Son, wait, wait, you're you have not to ready play, for this. You have to play Oblivion first. And they're <laughs> yeah. like, ugh, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> Stop, you violated the you law. Look, you look on the screen, and it's just a scene of the dude's arm just <laughs> fucking glitching. <laughs> Son, uh, you wouldn't understand. Yeah. It's got a charm to it, okay? It was a different time. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only game that we accept glitches like this. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Anyway, fuck kids. In conclusion. um, But you brought up Final Fantasy VII. I think that's a good segue. Sure. Uh, you've been still playing uh, Rebirth, um, and you've pretty much yes. doubled your hours from last week when we were talking about it. I have, actually. And you've made zero progress, from what I hear? <laughs> no, I've, <laughs> I've, made, I've made pretty <laughs> decent progress. Um. I'm in like the third or fourth area. I'm like chapter seven, which is, I think, pretty much halfway oh, through okay. the chapter points anyway. I believe there's 14 chapters, but um, yeah, I'm about 32, 33 hours or something like that. Mm. Um, but that being said, I will not be able to finish it before Dragon's Dogma comes out, unfortunately, but I got to hop on that fucking train, bro. Yeah, you got to so be... I'm going to have to kind of go back and forth with those two. Yeah. I mean, that's really the key, is not to fully leave it hanging. Which, which is good, because um, while I am doing all the like rebirth side shit, uh-huh. um, there is a ton of it, so I could feel like, uh, you know, you keep doing the same shit all the time, you're going to get burnt out. Right. So I think switching back and forth between the two games will help with that. Yeah. 
And again, that's why I was saying either last week or the week before, like it's kind of nice that Dragon's Dogma Two is a single player game mm-hmm. because we would be on it that much longer, that much more yeah. if it was multiplayer. Because w- let's be honest here for a sec, we played a fuck ton of Baldur's Gate, but we did kind of get burnt out on that. Like I hate to say it, but at yeah. the end we were just well like not excited to go back and play it. I think. Um, not that it wasn't exciting. Yeah, and again, in those moments, it's hard to put it down, but I think just really long sessions like that will burn you out. Yeah. Yeah, like if we were playing the game just like... And we were like trying to 100% it. We were trying to do every single thing on the map. We were. We were. Um, But if you were just playing it like maybe three hours here and there, not every day, um, I don't think it would have been too bad. Obviously, it would have taken us a lot longer. Yeah. But again, when we would sit down and play it, we were putting ten hour sessions. I in, know. You know, Fucking so that hardcore that will definitely hardcore that will <laughs> definitely burn you out. Um, but again, it's a single player game. I, I'm sure it's going to last a while. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I actually yeah. went ahead and uh, muted and like turned off notifications for like any Final Fantasy groups that I'm in. Oh. So I'm not spoiled. Oh, I thought you were gonna say you went ahead and pre-ordered Dragon Soul. Nah, nah. Um, but yeah, no, that that's definitely smart. Um, but still, enjoying the hell out of it. Definitely enjoying the hell of it. Uh, hell out of it. Um, there's an area I got to recently within like the past three or so hours of playing that there was like four or five mini games, dude. Oh wow! I seen online. There's 31 mini games in that game. Oh man, and they're all fucking fun. <laughs> really, all the ones you've played so have been far. Enjoyable? Yeah, there's one called Queen's Blood, which I think you would love. Queen's Blood? Yeah, it's like a uh, card game. Oh, Super shit. simple, but it yeah. can be a little hard. Takes some strategizing, but it's fucking fun, dude. Is it um? Is it like Gwent, just in the way that I you you remember. find collectible cards? No, um, when you battle people. Um, and when you uh, duel people, when you duel them, you can win a card from, mm, okay. I guess, their deck. And then so there you are can cards also to purchase collect. decks. Oh, Or shit. not decks, but like multiple cards. Oh, uh, that's cool. But yeah. Yeah, it's definitely cool. It's like pink slips. Fuck yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's But you really don't lose neat. cards when you lose. You don't lose cards? Nah. Oh, okay. That is good. Not unlike uh, Duel of Roses. Some shit right. like that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's actually really fucking fun. I wouldn't be mad if they came out with their own like spin-off game of Queen's Blood. Yeah, I mean, Gwent did that. Yeah, so, that is true. Yeah, Gwent's like its own game. Um, but that's good. Oh, that's yeah. good. I'm glad. Uh, are you? Would you say you're enjoying it even more now or just equally as much as last week when you'd put about 16, 17 hours in? Um... I didn't know if you hit a point in the store where you're like, oh, dude, this really has its claws in me now. That's the thing, man. I'm doing, like, so much side shit, I'm barely even touching the story. Have you done any of the, uh, have you got to any of, like, the romancing stuff yet? Like, going on dates or working Um, on those relationships? I believe the dates come out around the end of the game. Oh, interesting, Um, interesting. They take place around the end of the game. But um, there's a lot of uh, back and forth between the characters um, and between what dialogue you choose, it'll go up or down. Ah, so you probably got the right options pulled up. No, 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 no. I haven't looked up any of them. Oh, that's good. Um, do you have to answer like correctly, a hundred percent correctly? You can't miss one of the right options, no, no, or no, no, you no, don't no. get. The I state. think um the way it works is from what I've read is whoever is the highest is who you will end oh, up going on a like okay. romantic date or whatever with. I like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of flirting between the characters. Well, I mean, you know, Cloud, pretty uh, ladies' man. I mean, he is a ladies' man, but not that he's trying to be. He's very uh, stoic. Oh, so yeah, yeah, but it's that stoic confidence that yeah. everyone likes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, in that way, there's a lot of flirtation, mm-hmm. some jealousy. Oh, really? Kind of. Oh, dang! <laughs> I like that. But yeah. Do you uh, know who you're going to uh, go for? No, I'm just, um, I think it's going to happen organically. I'm just trying to 
make the most sense of what dialogue I choose. Right. Like, what right. would this character like me to say? You know what I mean? Oh, got you. <clears throat> got you. I just didn't know if you were like playing like a fiddle. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I just didn't know if like like Jeff is obviously going to go for Tifa. Uh, you know, if if you're kind of doing something like that. Yeah. No. Nah, it's just. Whichever. I mean, is it pretty much <clears throat> just like Tifa or Aerith? I mean, <clears throat> all the characters have their own relationship thing, so I don't know if you can fuck Red 13 or not. I mean, I don't think you fuck any of the characters, but... But, like, you could go on a date with Barrett? I don't know. Mm. I mean, let's hope so. Yeah. If they want to be inclusive. But. I mean, true. Yeah. You could definitely go on a date with Barrett. Yeah, there's no way... Um, they're going to not make that I'm sure option. he has a, a, um, a hand attachment. <laughs> all right, let's hope. A pocket pussy attachment for his oh gun. <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> oh fuck, that's hilarious. But no, that's good. I'm glad you're uh, still enjoying it. I'm glad you still have a lot of shit to do. Definitely getting your money's worth with this one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, mean, I mean, I just we just seen a comment on a YouTube video. A guy platinumed it in 158 hours. That's a fuck ton of playtime you can get out of that game. Yeah, yeah. For a single player game. Oh yeah, no, that's definitely worth uh, seventy bucks right there. Yeah, easy. But yeah, um, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, good purchase. Heck yeah! So let's talk about some Dragon's Dogma Two. Um, I'm gonna go over one game real quick. Oh, what uh, is this? We'll save Dragon's Dogma Two. So, um, a game coming out same day actually. Um, so I this I game interested me and then I seen something and I was like, uh, maybe not. But then I seen something where I'm like, maybe so. Um, oh, is this the samurai game? Yeah. Rise of the Ronin. Okay. So what do you got to say about Rise of the Ronin or Rise of Ronin? Rise of the Ronin. Okay. Um, so real quick, cause I do want to get into a uh, dragon stock <laughs> All right, so although lacking in the graphics department, game still looks passable. I know a couple episodes ago, I had seen something that was shown off combat, and I was like, this looks like it's like from PS3 era. Mm -hmm. But there was a uh, hands-on preview that IGN and GameSpot both put out, and I watched both of them, and I was like, oh, wow, this actually looks passable. Still looks a little PS4, but again, if, if it, um, as long as it looks like that and still has good performance, like, I'm in. Right, yeah. So, uh, narrative seems to be good and engaging with choices made throughout the game, changing how your story plays out. We always love to see that. Game looks to have plenty to offer with many main and side quests to do, as well as many, many games to play and places to explore because it is an open world game. Combat has a difficulty we come to expect from Team Ninja games with combo variety between weapons and enemies encountered, but is also a more approachable game than some of the studio's earlier works. Game features three difficult settings that can be changed at any time. Game also features a souls or rune-like mechanic found in the FromSoft universe called Karma that works similarly, but also has another form of experience that won't be lost upon death. And it has the same Neo mechanic of timing a button press after an attack to regain some key or your stamina uh, that is lost. Which was a mechanic I loved in Neo. I just wanted to point that out because I really enjoyed that about Neo. Um, but that was it. All that to say that it's kind of back on my radar now. Back on your radar, but you won't be able to play it until at least July, probably. Yeah, no, nah, that's fair. Because you got Dragon's Dogma. Yep. After that, you got Sandland. I got Sandland. And then after that, we have Elden Ring DLC. Oh, shit, I forgot <laughs> about that. Yeah. That's in June, so maybe in May. Yeah, could pick yeah it up. may have some time in May. Um, but yeah, no, that game's back on my radar. Not like really high up, but um, the people that were playing the game, they said that they were surprised um, at like how well it balanced um, like it being open world and being fun to explore, but also the combat being difficulty, difficult, but like fair. Hmm. Um, so I was happy to hear that. But now, some Dragon's Dogma 2 I'm excited. information because uh, this will be the last episode we put out before the release. That is true. Of Dragon's Dogma 2. So, with the release coming up very soon, by the time you hear this, it will be coming out within a few days. 
I thought we would go over some information on the game that excites me with the level of detail that was put into the game. So obviously we've covered this game before. I just wanted to hit on some uh, what may seem like minor notes, but just little things that excite me about the love and just how meticulous they were with crafting uh, the world, really, and just how it uh, interacts with the player. So the world and travel. Fast travel has always been something uh, implemented within most open-world games nowadays, and they wanted to take a different approach with this one. To make travel and exploration more organic and dynamic, the fast travel will be limited with carts being the main source of travel. But even they interact with the world organically as they can be attacked during travel to add a sense of immersive realism. Quest and map markers are also limited in this game as the developers push the player to discover locations on their own or look to pawns to aid in finding locations as some may have knowledge of where the objective location is. I just thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, I did like the, um, in the showcase with the, when you're on a cart, um, though you can ride it the entire way mm -hmm. and it can be attacked, you can also, while on the cart, still fast forward mm -hmm. to the point that you're trying to get to. Yes. So it gives, I think it's going to. So there's a lot of um, incentive, I guess, to staying on. Yeah. It's like, say you want to eat a meal. Take a bite. Just hop on a cart. Safe travels, my friend. Hopefully. <laughs> or so you think. Um, but I imagine it will be kind of like Skyrim, where how you can take those carts yeah. to like the cities. It'll be like that, and you're not just able to fast travel everywhere. But that is cool that they give you the option to just kind of skip ahead. Absolutely. But I mean, I think that will be a big part of the fun, um, especially early on. It's just mm -hmm. kind of staying on the cart the whole time just to see, like, what could happen. Damn pirates. Damn pirates. Ah, the damn griffin. <laughs> it's, a, it's a werewolf. It's a fucking dragon. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, in the same vein, the world and physics are truly dynamic, and a lot of time was put into how characters and enemies interact within it. One piece of footage was shown off displaying a fight uh, with a troll losing its balance along the side of a cliff, falling, but grabbing along the other side of terrain, kind of like in a trench. Um, its body now acting as a land bridge, giving you the opportunity to get across and potentially land some hits on its hands to have it fall below. Just one example of how realistic the physics, um, yeah, the physics interactions are. Dude. And how each scenario will be different among players. That was cool as fuck. Yeah, so um, if that wasn't clear... There's like a cliffside, and it kind of drops off to maybe like a ravine, like a river below. But mm -hmm. there's also some land on the other side, and I guess maybe an arrow to the eye. The troll is kind of like, or Cyclops is like kind of like stumbling, and it starts to fall, but it catches itself on the other side, now acting as like a land bridge. Yeah. So I was just like, oh, wow, that's super realistic. I've, I've never seen a, a game like kind of do something like that. Yeah, outside of like a uh, intended purpose. Well, I mean, it, it is intended. But it's organic to where it'll happen. It's not going to happen every time. Right. Like, you get him back to a cliff, shoot him. If he falls, you know, he just might catch that ledge. Yeah. And you and could have probably be able to get over. Maybe you did that purposefully to get over. Maybe that just happened. Maybe you can wait for him to, like, pull himself back up. Yeah. Maybe you take that opportunity to kind of heal up. Or you do go across and hit his hands for him to potentially fall. It's much cooler you know? than... You know, hey, there's a tree right there next to the ravine. Let's chop it down to get across. Yeah. Very cool. Or you get on top to go across, but maybe there's too much weight on them, so you all fall. Like, I don't know. Right, yeah. I don't I know, mean, but, like, that would be cool. It would be. Um. Speaking of which, maybe too much weight. Uh, small things such as player weight and height have their advantages and disadvantages, which is pretty fresh. Um, they, they, they took a lot of things into account with that. So uh, tall players can move faster and have better reach with weapons because their, their arms are usually a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But in return, are more susceptible to enemy attacks with having a bigger hitbox. Yeah. I mean, um, so just, again, a lot of things How that it should are be. 
that are taken into account with customization. And speaking of customization, dude, the character customization for this game looks to be insane. It's fucking wild. It, you can get like the accuracy is very realistic to a point where it's like it not like if I made you, it obviously wouldn't look like you, but it would be like an uncanny valley version of you. Mm-hmm. So very fucking similar. Right. Right. Um, like Asmund Gold, I showed you uh, a video of him making his looks just fucking like him, dude. Mm-hmm. Um, I have some pulled up here. Um, somebody made Geralt, Guts, um, Dante, oh, fucking shit. Melina. They even made Emo Toby Maguire from Spider-Man. Remember oh, when he emo, had the emo, the emo cut? Yeah, 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 yeah. They made fucking Walter White. They made Handsome Squidward, Shaggy. The fucking Avatar people from uh, Avatar. I can't remember James that Cameron. race. Yeah, James Cameron Avatar. Uh, Navi, they made Navi, I think. Navi, that's it. Yeah, they made La- like that. Lazelle, which is very accurate because she is a video game character. Oh, Looks wow. just like her. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. I mean, it's like people are going balls to the wall with these character creations, and it's nuts. But I love it. Yeah. I just don't know who I'm gonna make. Do I make myself? Do I make somebody else? I know, right? I usually try to like. I I usually try to make myself, but games are usually super limited. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So when you um, have like the option like this, yeah. Like, um, what character creation in a game has been the best in your opinion? Um, like Baldur's Gate three, insanely good character creation, but very limited. It was good, and what I would say is probably a, a game that I haven't even played. I just remember uh. Black Desert. Yeah. yeah um, that's a good one. I'm hearing about that, and that one having a pretty extensive uh, character creation. Yeah, they put a lot of effort into that one. Um, I will say, like, any of the newer WWE games, you can get pretty damn good characters from there. Um, Oblivion. Even to the point, in, like, uploading. <laughs> yeah, Oblivion, perfect. Perfect. Uh, honestly, the best character creation. Dude, that was, like, a legitimate uh, resume piece. If you if you could put together <laughs> a good-looking Oblivion character, then, yeah, that deserves to be on your resume. Yeah, just, <laughs> just, just good. I know. Dude, it was so hard because, again, I always, well, especially with Oblivion, I would always go Argonian. Mm-hmm. And, dude, I would put hours into trying to make a decent-looking Argonian character yeah. in that game. Yeah, Skyrim was so much better in that regard. Yeah. God. <laughs> oh man fucking characters in oblivion you're so fucking jump scares every time i wasn't originally the in fucking our... face zoom when you get into dialogue oh dude yes <laughs> or like you're just like walking around and then it just automatically turns you around <laughs> face zoom <laughs> fucking guard yeah. oh man um but yeah no that uh I, i'm excited to put many hours into the character creator yeah i hear it's like people are dedicating like two hours to their characters no i think just it's the creation i think for myself it'll definitely it'll definitely be close and then right after that yep. i have to create my pawn so another at least hour um but um yeah again looking forward to that. that's gonna be sick and uh speaking of pawn oh wow that was a really good uh segue uh the pawn system <laughs> is made even better with AI learning depending on how you play. A lead by example system with what items you use and when you use them, such as healing items, as well as learning locations in different terrain depending on how you utilize them. Um, so one example I'm kind of like thinking of is, you know, maybe the, the pawns, the AI is kind of paying attention to like when you're using healing items, like what percentage your health is at. Mm -hmm. And maybe depending on that, that's when they'll kind of, maybe a healer will come come over to you and start healing you. Or throw you a potion or something. So Um, that's probably one example. Say you're like, you generally heal between 40 to 60% of your HP. Mm -hmm. They'll start to pick up on that. And that's when they'll start to start healing you. Right. Or themselves. Yeah, which would be sick. 
Yeah, no, um, it's fucking genius. Maybe that along with, like, if you were approached by, like, a cyclops and, like, a bunch of goblins, like, maybe it pays attention to, like, who you're attacking first. Mm-hmm. And then based off that, that's who they'll start attacking first. You know, if you're trying to get, um, like, the goblins kind of picked off and then go for the, the big guy or the big guy first. Um, just a lot of... Uh, I don't know. I just think that would be really cool to see how that plays out. Yeah, I'm very interested in that. Yeah. I don't think... I uh, can't think of any game that's ever done something to that nah, effect. Um, and I don't even know if they would have been able to just with uh, the way that the AI has newly kind developed of AI. progressed throughout yeah. the, uh, these these past couple years in particular. Very true. Um, and again, there's... There, there's just so much we could really talk about this game for a long time with all the different classes, and I know in past videos we've kind of gone over that, but there's there's really just going to be a, a lot of customization and just kind of playing around, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And again, just seeing how how different they're approaching with just creating this world and just how dynamic it is and just the way that everything interacts with it, mm. it's in a way that I've never seen done. And I just think they're they're putting a lot of love into the small details. They're being very meticulous Dude, with this game. I can't believe it's almost here. Remember know, right? when we watched the stream? That was like the, the twenty year or what the fuck, like ten year anniversary yeah, or something. That was before we started doing the podcast because that it? was that was going to be our first game we played for the podcast. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're right. It was going to be Dragon's Dogma, the first one. Yeah, but we we ended up watching that stream or whatever. And they fucking revealed Dragon's Dogma 2. And yeah, we've been waiting on it ever since. I know, just because um, with each like little teaser or gameplay installment that they released to us, it's just got better and better. And they were showing off more and more, getting the hype going up more and more. I know. Um, I can't even be mad about not having fucking multiplayer anymore. It just looks so fucking good. I know, dude. Um, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and again, that releases also on the 22nd. Indeed. Honestly, I'm jealous of Colton because he's taking his fucking vacation. Yeah, yeah he two pretty weeks, much, yeah, because he's off. lining it up with his long break. So, yeah, um, I'm hoping that he will put some time into it. Um, I hope I hope he's planning to play this game because this is that's the perfect time. I mean, too. He's a, he'd be an idiot not to. Yeah, seriously. Put down the Call of Duty. Honestly. Two weeks. Two weeks. That's all Put we're down asking. the aim trainer. I know, right? Um, but that is all I have on Dragon's Dogma 2. Yeah, I mean, that pretty much concludes the episode. Hell yeah. R.I.P. Akira Toriyama. Seriously, man. The GOAT, the Sensei. legend. Sensei Kiriyama. Absolutely. Akiriyama? Akira, I just Akiriyama. mixed his name. <laughs> I kind of like it, though. Akiriyama. Akiriyama-san. <laughs> uh, yeah. Episode 73, guys. We'll see you next week. See ya. Peace.